since 2007, at least 500 formally recognized investigations against the student movement in Venezuela have been opened. I have the honor to represent most of them. Most of these criminal investigations are still pending right now. For example, Nixon Moreno, a prominent student leader from Merida State University was falsely accused of criminal charges. He requested, he applied for asylum at the Vatican Embassy in Venezuela, the representation of the Vatican government state in Venezuela. The asylum was formally granted to Moreno, but the Venezuelan government to this day has refused and has disrespected the international laws of asylum by not giving him safe passage to the Vatican state. He has been forced to flee from the embassy of the Vatican and now his destiny is yet undefined. The criminal justice system, and I am about to conclude, in Venezuela is continuously used by the government as a tool of intolerance and to persecute people that is identified as political opposition. Three short examples. The cases of the recently elected mayor of Maracaibo, Manuel Rosales, now facing criminal charges. The recently elected metropolitan mayor, Antonio Ledesma, who has been receiving death threats. Death to Ledesma, it says in the picture down below. Uh, since he, he assumed his charge as mayor of Caracas. And the recently uh, elected governor of Miranda, Enrique Capriles, and former mayor of Chacao, Leopoldo Lopez, which is a very popular leader of the opposition in Venezuela that holds the record of 25 criminal investigations open against them, all pending and all still in course. What are the crimes? They are all very popular opposition leaders in Venezuela. Recently, the second case, the criminal justice in Venezuela had convicted commissioners, police commissioners, Henry Vivas, Lázaro Forero, and Ivan Simonovis, along with seven police officers that were unjustly sentenced by a criminal court without any incriminating evidences against them on April 3rd, 2009, for the alleged death of two of the 19 people killed during the riots that took place in Caracas on April 11, 2002. None of the other 17 deaths have now a process or a formal investigation. These police officers were convicted just because they served under the command of a very prominent opposition leader. Against all logic, against all the provisions of the rule of the law, the only persons that are now convicted for these facts, in which you can see government supporters shooting at the opposition march and shooting at the police forces are these guys. None of the pro-government, my time is finished, I will conclude. None of these officers from the government has been indicted or convicted for none of the crimes. And the last case, the very case of the very successful businessman, Eligio Cedeño, who has spent now two years in prison with his trial uh, suspended with no term, with no uh, period of time fixed to be reopened just because he was suspected of being supporter of the leaders of the opposition. Not even the Jewish community in Venezuela or the major synagogue in Caracas are respected. Recently, the temple, the temple was robbed and severely damaged by alleged common criminals that, however, did not hesitate to paint anti-Semitic messages in those in those sacred walls. The same messages, by the way, often used by President Chavez himself against the state of Israel, taken, by the way, 
from late Norberto Ceresole. You can check this guy in the internet. One of his initial advisors, well known from his militant anti-Semitism and for his radical denial of the Holocaust. There are some, these are some of the cases. This is Eligio Sedeño. If you could conclude so we can. Yes. Thank you. These are some of the cases we have in Venezuela. But they are not the government abuses, but oblivion and silence of the international community about these facts, the worst enemies we are facing in Venezuela right now, today. All of these grave acts of intolerance, all of these violations of human rights remain unpunished, will remain unpunished if the free and democratic nations of the world in exchange for cheap oil or easy profits trade human dignity for silence. I respectfully urge you and all of the members of the international community to just listen to us. I urge you to confront these facts, to challenge them, if you will, and to see, to really see what's truly happening in Venezuela. I ask you, respectfully ask you, to help us fight intolerance against the political dissident movements in Venezuela. I ask you to act against silence against oblivion, against indifference. What is the purpose of the achievement of an international criminal justice system articulated to prevent the most grave damages conceivable to human rights if nation leaders won't respect it at will? Ask yourself that question. Did you know, for example, that Hugo Chavez, two weeks ago, invited al-Bashir to Venezuela as a friend? Did you know, for example, that the politics of Venezuela, of the government of Venezuela, regarding the Inter-American Court of Human Rights is to systematically deny the results of the cases in which Venezuela has been convicted and declared responsible for violations of human rights? What would you do? What will be your choice? We have clearly decided to confront this abuse. We expect you to do the same thing. Thank you very much.